Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Seek and Destroy. And I know for some of you who just jumped on with my Trace videos, you haven't seen my face yet probably. So here it is, it's not that glamorous, uh, but I wanna do something a little different in this one because uh, this was a more personal touch, something that I saw added to Netflix that I didn't see before when the show went up. And that is this episode called Trace After Dark, which is essentially just an interview round table type discussion with some of the creators, uh, the creators of the comic book, some of the creators of the show, the voice actresses and stuff who play Alexandra and both the American version and also the version that plays in the Philippines. And, uh, and I'm, I was awesome. I thought it was really cool. So before we get into the two-part finale and I discuss those two episodes, I figure we'll do this one as like a precursor to that. That way I have more time to take some more notes because there's a lot going on in the last two episodes of this show and I want to make sure I get all of it uh, as much as I can get accurate, uh, but also, you know, give some room because a lot of you have been informing me on stuff because this is definitely out of my wheelhouse. Uh, this show has been, uh, you know, exploring folklore from the Philippines, and it's been really neat. And as someone who's an outsider to it, and like I said, there was like a horror show I wrote for Asia for a while ago, like two years ago now. I did a pilot, but it was based on like mixed folklore from different, um, you know, areas of, of Asia. And one of them was like Thailand and uh, like South Korea and things like that. And I never really got to um, explore the stuff that's in Manila. And so that's why a friend of mine recommended this comic to me a couple years ago saying, you would probably like this. It might help out with your show. And I was like, yeah, I'll get around to it. I don't know if the show's going to get picked up. You know, I wrote the pilot, but who knows where it's going to go from there. And then we never really got anything going on the show, especially with the pandemic and everything. So, uh, so since that went away, I, my interest hasn't been gone. It's just I have other things I'm working on, like Neverland and other things I'm writing, creating, and then also videos I make. Uh, so, and then life, you know, I work a, a job, almost a full-time job. It's like 30, 35 hours a, a week. So, uh, you know, between all that, it's like I, I just don't have... I just, it kind of slipped away from me. So coming back to uh, Tresse now, now that it's a, an awesome show on Netflix, and getting the information from you know Warner Brothers or a contact that I have through Warner Brothers um, who does PR for different companies, it was really cool to kind of get that information and be like, hey, this show sounds neat. I'm a big fan of, you know, characters like John Constantine and Dead Man. I love Supernatural, obviously. It's, you know, that's one of my favorite shows of all time. And uh, and I like characters that are stoic and kind of intense and have a lot going on. And that's kind of what Alexandra is. And it was so cool to watch this uh, After Dark special and which that's what it is. It's a 30 minute special round table of just exploring how the comic was created, when it was created back in 2005, what inspired it. Uh, obviously, you know, Filipino folklore inspired it, but you know, doing different things. They even started with the, the lady in white or the white lady, the ghost uh, story uh, being murdered on Balete Drive. And that was kind of their first issue. And which is funny because Supernatural starts off with like a lady in white who just appears in the backseat of guys' cars and uh, and tries to get them to take her home. Um, so it's really cool stuff. I mean, I like a lot of parallels there. Uh, but hearing the, uh, you know, one of the comic creators say that he was inspired by characters like Batman and John Constantine and that they originally created the show and they had a male lead character. So I'm guessing like Anton or something was like the main lead. And then he said, you know, I got some art from the artist in and I wasn't 100% sold on this. I was like, you know, maybe we've seen a bunch of tough guys before, a bunch of John Constantines and Batmans. Let's let's do something a little different and let's put this role uh, of a detective, you know, someone like a Fox Mulder, but then like mixed with a Batman or a John Constantine. Like, let's do a female version of that and bring in a female lead. And so they, you know, he asked the artist, can you do a couple drawings of a female version of Alex Tresse and make it Alexander Tresse? I'm guessing that's the name. Maybe they just had different names. Maybe it was Anton. I can't remember. But, uh, but they, he was like, can we draw it as a, can you draw it as a woman? And he got the art in and he said, this is it. Like, this is where we're going to go. This is the direction we're going to go in and we're going to make it, um, you know, that she's, the torch has been passed down to her from her father. And that's where, you know, she's, uh, you know, she has to go from there and fill her father's shoes. And she goes, and you see that a lot with like male characters and stuff, but it was, you know, for them, they were like, this was cool. It helped us re-examine the show or the, the comic, at least when they were creating it, it helped us re-examine that by, um, by, you know, by being, by making the character a woman. So they talked about that. They talked to the actresses who portray uh, Alexandra in both languages and uh, what the role means to them. The actresses gave their point of view of what like the, you know, these, the characters started to grow on them or what the character meant to them. Uh, you know, especially the actress who plays her um, for her Filipino version uh, in the Filipino language edition. Uh, she was talking about how the, you know, it was really important for her to get this role. And Jay said there was another actress on the show who was Filipino who drove down from San Francisco, like, you know, eight hour, nine hour drive and, uh, and drove down 
just to uh, you know just to record her stuff um, because it meant that much to her t that a show was going to be based on the in the Philippines on Filipino folklore and it was going to be horror and it was just going to have all these elements that they just don't see a lot of in America and so I and, and on on a you know brand like Netflix which can share it internationally all over the world so I just thought it was cool it was really neat to check out After Dark um, I learned a lot about the different types of creatures you know the like I said the white lady and the, and some of the other you know the awongs or whatever they're called they're you know the the kind of the creatures that they you know the guy who created the comic he was saying uh, Budget he was saying that when he was a kid he had always heard tales of these creatures and so he wanted to make them like like gangsters like he was like i'm gonna make them be the reason there's so much crime and, and stuff like that in our city in manila and i'm gonna you know that's that's gonna be my approach of how they're intertwined into the the real life reality of the world is that they kind of stay hidden but they're gangsters and most people avoid gangsters and mobsters and criminals and stuff and so it's easy to portray them as actual demons because most people try to you know stay away from them and uh, and i just thought that was kind of neat so he's talking about that and they were all talking about locations in the film like how the police station in episode four is uh, actually like a real place and the cemetery that's a few blocks away is a real place also and uh, and that you know when they were the guys who were writing the uh, and you know the anime version of it they were reading the comic going holy crap i know this place i used to live down the street from that place and uh, i just thought this was just a neat window into this world uh especially now having seen the whole series um it was cool to go and like uh, check this out and check out this after dark special so i'll just mention here i, I want to keep this kind of short because i'll leave the experts you know up to explaining everything they did and where they came up uh, how they came up with the show and the comic like i'd rather you go watch that so if you have netflix when you look up Tresse on there, you'll see Tresse, the series, and then Tresse After Dark, which is what this is. It's like a 30, you know, three minute special, something around there, where they kind of break down the creation of the show in an interview format, but also like in a round table format. I really love the set. It was like two people on a couch over here, two people here. The two interviewers were in chairs. And then on the back wall, you had a portrait, like, you know, pictures and stuff of artwork from the, the comic book and, and the show. But in them, there was like screens, like iPad screens that were, uh, you know, showing uh, Jay Oliva and then the comic book creators, um, you know, sh like kind of having them transfer in uh, through, a, you know, via, a, you know, chat or something, video chat and be a part of this. And I just thought that was really cool. And uh, it, was, it made for a neat looking set, but it's an actual place from the show. So it's like, uh, and from the, the comic book. So, uh, so I just thought that was cool that they were like, oh, let's make uh, like Netflix clearly really invested in this show. And they were like, hey, we, we like this. In fact, some of the, uh, like Shay Mitchell, she got a cast in this because of Netflix it turns out Jay Oliva was like you know I am I'm having trouble casting the main character for the English version and Netflix said what about Shay and they're like he's like whoa can we get Shay Mitchell like you know would she be interested and they said well we can always ask her right and through Netflix you know their contacts they they were able to uh, reach out to Shay who has done some work for them recently and they got her on the show so that was just really cool to see like again more of how these things come together what's important to these creators and what's important for them to bring to the screen to translate and to share like with the public um, I always like that I always like hearing people from different backgrounds and, and with different folklores like we have our own like horror stories here in America um, and uh, and so it's cool to hear like horror stories from other countries and see that translated and that's what I think appealed to me about the show and that's what appealed to me about the show I was writing too was to get to do that research and learn about uh, folklore and horror stories and urban legends from around the world um, I just thought that that's such a cool concept to me as a horror fan and this little special that they put together after dark I thought was a great way to kind of be a window for people who don't really understand how animation has worked sometimes you know how it works sometimes how it's made um, you know how people get involved in it it's a great window into that, but it's also a great window into this show itself, and uh, and I thought that was really awesome. So if you haven't checked it out yet, please go watch Trisse After Dark. It's really awesome, and uh, I liked it. I actually really ended up liking uh, just watching people sit around talking about this passion, you know, this the passion that they have for this project. I just thought that was really cool, and to see it evolve from a comic book to an anime series, and it took like you know 16 years 2005 the comic came out 2021 we got the anime series so that's a long time and uh, but to hear the road to that is 
awesome. And so I'm glad that Netflix put this special together, that they invested that money into it to build this set, bring everyone together. I thought that was really cool that they did that. And so I think you should check it out if you haven't already. So thanks for watching the show. Let me know what you think of After Dark down below if you've watched it. And like I said, we have episode four discussion already went up before this, hopefully. And then my episode five and six discussion will be in one video because it's like a two-part finale. And I'll, I'll give me another couple days. Let me rewatch the episodes, take a few more notes, and then I'll get that up to you guys as soon as possible. So thanks so much. See you all in the future. Peace.